Hello, my name is Ishita Datta and this is my project for linear algebra and its applications. My project is on finding the solution to the Leontief economic model by using elimination method. In an economy, the sectors that make up the economy are often dependent on each other. The output of one sector may act as the input required by another sector. But what is the quantity of this output? that is needed to be produced to satisfy the demands of another industry, which will use it as its input. The Leontief economic model or the Leontief input-output model solves this problem and creates a cyclic process between industries. In this project, we are able to reach an equilibrium state in an economy by making use of a homogeneous system of equations. Vasily Leontief came up with the model in 1941 and won the Nobel Prize for it in 1973. The model will only apply to an economy which has the ability to reach its equilibrium state. There is no demand analysis, so no decisions are made with respect to the production, cost allocation, advertising, inventory holding, etc. The history of input-output analysis was put forth by Leontief, who was then inspired by the works of Karl Marx and John, John Charles. There were many forerunners to this analysis. However, Leontief was the first to do so using matrix representation. There are two models to the Leontief input-output analysis an open model and a closed model. For both models, we approach the problem by forming a technology matrix, which is a matrix representing the interdependencies among the sectors. In the given figure, we can see how the outputs are indirectly being utilized by the input and an incessant cycle comes into play. The utilization of the output can be direct or indirect. Now, what happens in the case of a closed input-output model? All the industries produce to satisfy the input requirements of the other industries in the model. There is no exogenous sector having a primary input or a final demand. So our first step in approaching this problem would be to create an input-output table. In, a prob in, in the given problem, let's say the value of xij is usually given and our goal is to find out the output denoted by xi, which is the last column of the table. This is the total output. For example, let's say x12 represents the amount of the product of industry s1 needs as input for industry s2. Here i are the row values and j are the column values. We convert the table into a technology matrix A, where let's say for this example, the entry for A11, which has the value 0.2, holds the number of units that agriculture uses of its own product in producing one more unit of agriculture. Here x1 is the final output that we want to find out and point 2 is the value of x11 which is already given. The same goes for the other values such as x2, x3 and how the given values point 3 and point 2 are used. The derived equation needed to solve for the final output is an identity matrix minus the technology matrix times x which is equal to zero, as given in the first line. When solving for x, we come to the conclusion that there are infinite number of solutions and the system is inconsistent. This is the case usually for the closed models. Here the empirical analysis is employed and the solution, that is the production levels, are expressed in terms of proportion to each other. 
coming to the open input output model. In this model, there is one sector which exogenously determines the final demand and supplies a primary input not supplied by any of the other industries. So we have an additional column in the input output table, which is the final demand by this special industry. So as we can see in the table, D1, D2, D3 are the demands of each industry which will require it. So just like what we did for the closed model, in an open model also, we convert the table into a technology matrix. So over here, point one holds the number of units that industry one uses of its own product in producing one more unit of, it, of industry one. And we need to find out the value of X1. Same goes for X2, X3, which eventually forms the matrix X. In addition to that, we also have a demand matrix D, which we get from the additional sector having the final demand. So we finally use these two matrices to find out the production level X. So here, the derived equation needed to solve for the value of the production level X is the inverse of I minus A times the demand matrix D. When I minus A is non-singular, we will have a unique solution and the system is consistent. So this is the procedure of finding the production level X using the open input output model. The Leontief model has many applications and with its help, we are able to tell how the government can predict deeper recession when an industry, let's say the airline industry for instance, is shrinking. Or for detecting how changes in demand for one industry affects the entire economy. City planning is also one of the major applications of the Leontief model. In conclusion, the Leontief model can be applied to within a business, or on national, international, or regional scale. However, like every model, the Leontief model also has its limitations. Some assumptions that Leontief had made when creating this model was that the production follows the law of constant returns to scale, and that there are no external economies and diseconomies of production that will be affecting our current economy. There are many extensions to the model as well. The Leontief model will always form the very basis of many discoveries to come in the future. That brings us to the end of this presentation. Thank you.